a much anticipated new KonMari book, part two. She just released it on the 5th and it already has a ton of reviews. So if you're looking to buy it, go ahead and click in the, in the bottom bar and I have the link so you can read the reviews. And if you buy it through that link, it actually helps my channel. I thought what a great idea to do a review on this book. I have already read all the way through it. it. Like the first book, it is a very easy read. A lot of it is repetitive from the first book. So it is a companion book. I don't think it's supposed to stand out by itself. So that might be disappointing to some people and you can already already see if you're looking on the Amazon page already some of the reviews. Also some people are disappointed because there are no picture photographs. It is an illustrated book and so at the end of this video stay tuned because at the end of this video I'm going to go through all really quickly and you can just pause on the ones you want to look at longer. So this book you can basically divide it into four categories to me the organization declutter section, how to deal with other people's stuff and other people's clutter section and the joy section why you should declutter or why you should organize and then the last category is the kitchen. She goes really in depth on how to deal with the kitchen. And I think she didn't go through that in the first book because she doesn't do most of the kitchen or most of the cooking. In regards to Joy, she says, what's the worst that could happen? Don't take it too seriously. If you enjoy it, it will eventually get done. Don't get stressed out about this. This is not something you need to get stressed about. It's not going to make it easier if you stress yourself out about it. Just find the joy in everything that you do and it'll eventually get done. The second thing is that tidying equals confidence which she had covered in her first book but also that tidying makes you your love life and your career life get better in order. Your life takes on a whole new course and then she said find ideal images of what you like. Find an ideal image of what you like for your house and, and notice the patterns of what you do like. Be mindful because when you're mindful which is a great minimalist, religious, and organization philosophy and you're mindful you're kinder to others and kinder to yourself so you're a better human being cherish what you have always and you can only cherish what you have if you're mindful and when you cherish what you have you will always have joy so it kind of leads back to philosophy contentment and that is the premise of minimalism altogether is contentment and it's important to note that Kamari is not advocating minimalism although some people get confused about that she's clear in this book in three different places that she's not advocating minimalism She's advocating organization. She's an organization guru, but she says to declutter like all people who know a lot about organi organizing do say because you have to declutter first. Because she advocates organization and not minimalism, that makes her more relatable because most people are just looking to organize. And the other thing that makes her really relatable is she's very positive. That's my take on her on why the first book blew up is because she's very, it, she has great insight on organization through years. She's very passionate about it. She's very positive and she's very relatable through her stories. You'll find plenty new stories in this book. That's probably the thing that stood out the most besides the illustration is the new stories. You will discover new joys by discarding which everybody who's involved in minimalism knows and my favorite 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 part, this is my favorite part, is that she says to make a U corner and I didn't realize I already had a U corner. <laughs> it's because my master bath has a big master closet adjacent to it so sometimes I just want to get away so I'll just go into that room there's a velvet chair in there and I'll just pick up my book because there's a book in there and I'll just read 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 so she basically says to make something like that make a U corner it doesn't have to be a whole room if you are a housewife and you cook all the time perhaps make it near the kitchen and just have pictures of your kids or things that you really inspire joy decor things like that hobby equipment and keep your U corner make it your own everybody needs a place like that to recharge I really like that tip that's my favorite tip from the joy section we're going to get into the organization and decluttering tips quickly and the first organizing clip is tip is obviously the folding method which I do not use for my house I already stored everything like with the spine showing but if you really like the KonMari method it changes your life then she will have plenty more tips on how to fold and illustrations on how to fold in this book the next tip that she advocates is to bath products that organize them by daily use daily and not use daily so don't make the categories too complex, which is something I definitely, definitely advocate as well. If you're having any trouble get rid of, getting rid of a stuffed animal with eyes, to cover the eyes with a napkin, throw it in a bag, and throw salt on it. And it might sound bizarre. Some of you out there will be like, I'll try anything. And other people may be very cynical, but if you're having a hard time getting rid of something that you're really attached to, like a stuffed animal with eyes, cover its eyeballs, <laughs> put it in a bag, throw some salt on it, 
and it's like a memorial for the animal, you know, because we get very attached to things with eyes. That was basically our point. I thought it was worth putting because that's something that hasn't been covered in any other minimalist book, so I'm trying to share with you the fresh ideas. Everything has a purpose and we give it too many purposes and then it's not as good at its original purpose because we give it too many responsibilities. A greeting card is to convey a greeting. So once it's done that, send it on its merry way. It's already done its purpose. In a bento box, they separate the ingredients and so we should separate materials like with like cloth with cloth, cords with cords, to be mindful of how we store things because materials matters. But cleaning is something we have to do for the rest of our life, as she mentioned in the first book, but tidying we should not be doing for the rest of our life. And my favorite, again I say the favorite, my favorite tip in the organization category is what sparks joy? Because as you know, her criteria is does this spark joy? If you can't figure out what sparks joy in your life to gather everything into the category, pick up your shirts and find three that you absolutely love. Now you will know what sparks joy in your life. In regards to the kitchen, the kitchen is the third category, is she said the most important thing is ease of cleaning, not how easy it is to take something out. My kitchen, everything is so easy to get out, but that's because I'm a minimalist. And like I said, she's not advocating minimalism. And if you are a minimalist, you can have both. You can have ease of cleaning and ease to get everything out. But in most small kitchens, you do not have room for everything. So if you're not going to minimize your ingredients and your recipes, and then you want to be able to cook everything, you will have to either choose between ease of cleaning and easing, ease of getting stuff out because you have to store stuff all over the stove and everything. It's just going to be stored all over the place. She does not do most of the cooking, so she asked her husband what he does when he does do the cooking, and he basically says he takes everything out at a time, everything he's going to use, which is a great tip. Because, let me just say, if you do not have a mise en place, you probably will forget an ingredient. You don't have an ingredient, you'll start cooking, and oh my goodness, you're going to be on the master chef, you're going to start having to ad lib. <laughs> And then the second tip is to put things back as you're using them. The third tip is immediately wipe things down with soapy water as soon as you're done with them. This is the one of the more bizarre tips, but I thought it was worth sharing because it's very original and maybe it'll work for you, but she stores all of her scraps in the freezer. She puts all the scraps in a bag in the freezer. It doesn't decay, doesn't break down, doesn't stink up the freezer. And then right before the trash goes out, she throws them all in the trash so that they're not stinking up the trash. Everything needs to be seen. That's the most important thing. You need to be able to see everything. Very last category is dealing with other people's stuff. Everybody has had this issue if you live with other people. <laughs> especially more than one other person. Unfortunately, her advice is like many minimalists and many organization people is don't touch other people's stuff. You have to accept it. And the only thing that you can do is be kind to them and show by example. And that really is a good tip in not just organization and minimalism, but religion or anything else. You can't force people to do something. They will just resent you for it. You can only be there for them. So she says offer physical help. In other words, organizing is a lot of work and a lot of times people don't organize because they don't know where to start. Offer to take out the garbage bags, shred the papers, and help them fold. And then that's the most that you can do. And she also says when you're done with your decluttering, so many new opportunities will open up that you should be focusing on those new opportunities and not be focusing on what other people have going on. Of course, if it's very personal, don't touch it. But that's one of her tips on how to be more appreciative of other stuff is to try to understand why they like them. So that is basically the gist of the book. So I'm going to go through these illustrations and hopefully these will help you. On this page she shows the correct order in which to tidy. Shows what to do with things that you don't know how to deal with. So she shows wrapping cords up in a bag, but I prefer a cord box. But basically pictures and things that you don't know what to do with, you just, this is how she deals with them. Her basic folding method and after this it gets kind of repetitive if you know the basics, so I'll go through these next ones quickly. How to fold long sleeved clothes. How to fold odd shaped clothes. How to fold a camisole. How to fold a jacket or she calls it a parka. How to fold a chunky sweater. How to fold pants and shorts. How to fold dresses and skirts. I really like this picture. This basically talks about how you have to store hanging items from light to dark. How to fold stockings and thick tights. How to fold panties and briefs. How to fold bras. 
Another one of my favorite illustrations, basically just showing how to organize a whole closet. How she likes to put dressers in and bags within bags and hats within hats and everything else like a vacuum and everything she possibly can in the closet. I really like this. How she sorts things in dressers, again another great illustration. Showing the bag in bag method and the how to fold plastic bags. She folds every plastic bag she keeps. How to store accessories, how to store ties, storing stationery and supplies, dividing skincare products into two categories, storing makeup all in a single professional box, relaxation goods in a cute basket, hobby equipment all stored together, collectibles all stored, easy to see. One of my favorite pages where she talks about eating, implements, cooking tools, and food. The three components of a kitchen. She likes to store utensils really nicely since it comes in contact to you many times a day. She likes to be really decorative with her placemat setting. That's pretty much how I organize my kitchen drawers. But that is not how I organize my pots and pans more kitchen things and she likes to keep the saran wrap mounted to the wall of the door. Uh, she likes to keep the fridge 30% empty so it leaves extra space for things. Another one of my favorite illustrations basically showing how she lays out her entire kitchen. I love it. Great illustration on how she lays out a bathroom. Organizing photos to put it in a photo album. An entryway that sparks joy a living room that sparks joy, a kitchen that sparks joy, an office that sparks joy, a bedroom that sparks joy, a bathroom that sparks joy. I don't know what those fishes are that are swimming. Last thing I want to say is I really like the designs of her books. They're very pleasant to touch and they're very aesthetically pleasing. They just look so great on the shelf. I really like blues. Mm -hmm.